good morning, afternoon, or evening, and welcome to Nancy Drew Danger by Design, where we need to go and uh, make some phone calls. So, um, let's go back to the atelier, because maybe Heather will be there as well. We know that there's a phone there that we can use to make calls, so... Yeah, we'll do that. Heather is is here actually. Did you get the stuffed parrot? Here you go. What's it for anyway? It's a manette thing. You wouldn't understand. No one would. So here's the thing. Heather had a bunch of designs her designs on her desk and Minette always wears a mask. Are Heather and Minette the same person? But no, I've heard them speak to each other on intercom or whatever. Well. Why did you write Minette that threatening letter? What? You think I wrote those letters? Well, I mean... I saw the memo you sent Minette about fonts. The letters on it match the letters on one of the threats I found in her dodo box. You opened Minette's dodo box? That's the real reason you didn't want me looking in there, isn't it? Okay. A couple months ago, I got so fed up with her that I... I just had to get back at her somehow. I'd seen how upset those other letters made her, so I sent one of my own, but just that one. And I never intended to really do anything to her. I just wanted her to suffer. You know, emotionally. The way she made you suffer when she started going out with Dieter. You really don't miss a trick, do you? I thought when she dumped him like that that he'd finally come to his senses and realize that I'm the one he should be with. But even now, even after she broke up with him, she still has some kind of weird, sick hold on him. Look, you're not going to tell Minette about this, are you? There's really no need. It'll just upset her all over again. And she's so far behind as it is. And there's no telling how she'd take it out on me, or on you, for that matter, just for telling her. So don't say anything to her, okay? I'm gonna have to think about it. I'll see you later. Uh, can we talk to her about anything else? What's up? No. Well, I'll see you later. Allez, bye bye. Okay, uh, let's make some phone calls. Uh, so we need to call Zoo. And then I guess we need to use the calling card. Didn't we have the phone number for the, like, history person as well? Oh well. Uh, Zoo. 010161 Hello? I know you are calling for minutes. Please, tell me. Is this Xing Xing? Uh, no, I'm afraid not, <laughs> but I know Jing Jing. In fact, I'm staying at her place. You are the most lucky person in the monde. I am a big fan of Xing Xing. I call her house and leave massage. I call Minette because I know she works there, but she will not talk to me. She is too... Um, what is the word? Paranormal? Uh, you mean paranoid? Yes, yes, paranoid. So, if you are not Jing Jing, why do you call me? This is Zhu, right? Yes, yes, I am Zhu. Well, Zhu, my name is Nancy Drew. And I saw a symbol on the wall when I was in an underground passage not too long ago. It looked like two leaves with two nut-type things attached to them. And I just wondered if you could tell me what it meant or why it was there. Yes, yes, of course I can. But first, you must have Jing write something for me. Write something for you? You must have her write something that I can keep. Have her write. Zoo, 
my love, Jing. Then, take the medical to the Danfer Rochereau station, enter the catacombs, find the bones from the Magdalene Cemetery, and put the autograph in the skull below the plaque. Have her right, Zoo, my love, Jing. Go to the catacombs, find the Magdalene Cemetery bones, and leave the autograph in a skull. Yes, yes, exactly that. Don't worry about desecrating the person whose bones they may be. The skull, it is a fake. My friend and I put it there. And so, after you deliver it, you call me and I tell you all about the symbol you saw. But what if Jing Jing refuses? Okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, let's hope she doesn't refuse. Zhu had a line there, but uh, it, it wasn't voice, so... Um, let's see. Let's do the calling card thing. 01019313. Lynn. That's the historian. Let's call her first and then update our friends. So, 1 559 555. Oh, there's a lot of numbers here. 1 And 6838. Modern European history, Lynn Manrique. Hello, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Paris. Actually, I talked to you earlier when you tried to call Manette. She's finally calling me back? Wonderful. Please, put her on. Uh, I'd like to, but I'm afraid she's still too busy to talk to you. Oh. But if you don't mind, could I ask you a couple of questions about Noisette Tournade? Certainly. Um, you don't plunder. You mentioned hidden plunder in your letter to Minette. What did you mean? Some people said that during the war she took various pieces of artwork, mostly from churches, and stashed them away somewhere so they wouldn't fall into enemy hands. Were they recovered after the war? The artwork remains lost to this day. No one knows exactly what Noisette took, or if indeed she took anything. You see, from 1942 until the liberation of Paris, Noisette worked as a translator for the Germans by day and an encoder for the French resistance by night. This, as you might imagine, made everyone suspicious of her, both French and Germans alike. And after the war, things got ugly. Especially when people found out she was romantically involved with a German soldier. His name was Hans. Hans von Schwesterkrank. You're kidding me. Um... Was he by any chance related to Dieter von Schwesterkrank, the fashion photographer? I'm afraid I have no idea. Hans left Paris right after the war and never returned, leaving Noisette to fend for herself. She was tried as a collaborator in 1946 and acquitted, but the experience left her quite bitter. She never married, you know. Very private person. She served as Paris's director of public works for more than 20 years. Yet not one person has been able to tell me what her favorite color was. In any case, Noisette was terribly hurt that the city she loved had turned on her like that. After her trial, she told the press that the truth of what she'd done during the war resided in her and in the person and place she loved the most. And that was that. She never spoke of her wartime activities again. I assume that the person she was referring to was Hans von Schwesterkrank, who passed away a year or two ago and that the place was her beloved Moulin, which is where she lived for almost half a century after the war. That's why I'm hoping Minette will allow me to visit it. Now, I've got a question for you. In the hours before she died, Noisette was said to have constantly muttered three words, red left green. Is there anything inside the Moulin that has to do with red left green? Anything at all? No, but I'll keep that in mind and let you know if I see something. I'd appreciate it. Any other questions? Uh, oh, we've got a lot. Cross of Lorraine. After the war, 
When she was the director of public works, what kind of things did Moisette do? She oversaw many of the services which the citizens of Paris enjoyed every day. Streets, bridges, parks, their maintenance all came under Noisette's purview. She particularly enjoyed putting various forms of art on permanent display in various public places, especially parks. Okay. What's the story behind the Cross of Lorraine? The vertical bar crossed by two horizontal bars is an emblem that was first used by Joan of Arc, as well as the Dukes of Lorraine in the 15th century. But during and after World War II, it became a symbol of the French Resistance. Nowadays, it's not unusual to see it on statues or monuments commemorating the period in French history from 1940 to 1945. I mean, it's kind of obvious what the French resistance was. It was a movement that wanted to get rid of the Germans in France, get rid of the occupation, but uh... What was the French resistance? That was the name given to the various groups of men and women who did their best to undermine Germany's military occupation of France during World War II. Some would engage in strikes and sabotage, while others would collect and pass intelligence along to the Allies. Needless to say, their operations were highly covert and very dangerous. Yep. Um... What else can you tell me about the German occupation of Paris? The German army entered Paris on June 14, 1940, and after France formally surrendered on June 22nd, the Germans controlled the city. They took whatever they wanted, food, supplies, houses, artwork, and dictated how Parisians were to live their lives. Naturally, their presence was deeply resented. Some people ignored the situation as best they could. Some collaborated with the Germans, while others, like those in the resistance, fought back until the city was finally liberated on August 25th, 1944. What did you mean when you said Moisset was tried as a collaborator? Collaborators were French citizens who not only failed to resist the occupation, but actually helped the Germans keep it going. Because Noisette had worked for the Germans as a translator and had a German boyfriend, after the war, many of her countrymen automatically accused her of collaboration. When it was revealed that she had been a member of the resistance, instead of exonerating her, that just made some people think she'd been spying for the Germans, too. As I said before, it was an ugly time, one which poor Noisette spent the rest of her life trying to forget. You've been very helpful. Thank you. It was nothing. Goodbye. All right, uh, let's call our friends and then, I don't know, I guess we're going into the catacomb. No, I guess we're going to see Jingjing Jing and then going into the catacombs. But, uh, Bess and George and the Hardy Boys first. 01019313. Two, three, five, five, five. Four, four, six, eight. Hello? Me again. We're both on, Nan. What's up? Okay, a couple of things. I took this very strange phone call from Annette. At least I tried to. What was so strange about it? The guy wouldn't give me his name, and he sounded very hostile. And he had a German accent. And, not long after that, some unknown person sent Minette a box of cockroaches. Ew, yuck. Tell me about it. They got loose all over her office, and she made me find them and put them back in the box. Double yuck. Did any kind of note come with them? Nope. Sending anonymous letters is one thing, but sending live vermin? Sounds to me like things are getting personal. Yeah, let's just hope they don't start to get deadly. The windmill Minette works out of was once owned by a woman named Noisette Tornade, who used to be a resistance fighter during World War II. 
Was it like her headquarters or something? According to this historian in the States who's doing research on her, she lived there for some 50 years after the war. And she's rumored to have been involved in the theft of artwork that's been missing since the war. And... There's more? And a certain young German fashion photographer who used to date Minette has been carrying around the woman's obituary. Why? I don't know. Yet. yet. <laughs> I'd better go. Have fun. Amusez-vous bien. Show off. All right, um, the Hardy Boys, 0101, 1, 1, 1, Um, or 865. Hello? Hey, Joe. Hey, Nancy. What's going on? Would you guys mind giving me a hint about something? We thought you'd never ask. What would you like us to tell you? Machine like the one featured in that code book. Well, they've been hinting pretty hard at the mill. So, like, um, probably somewhere in here. Any idea where I can find a machine like the one featured in that code book of Noisettes that I found? To find something that old, you'd probably have to rummage through every basement in Paris. Maybe you could find someone who's done the rummaging for you. Either way, it won't be a walk in the park. Or will it? You guys are magnifique. Say what? <laughs> it's a compliment. See ya. Oh. So... They really are selling anything and everything at the park, then. Um, does Hugo Butterly have anything to say now that we're still here? the Paris studio of Hugo Bartoli, world-renowned fashion designer. As you might expect, I'm very busy right now creating my spring collection, about which I'm very excited. Regretfully, I'm far too busy to answer the phone, and as we all know, returning calls is such a bore. May I suggest you peruse my website, www.hugobartoli.mod, and use the link provided to contact me via email. In the meantime, my luscious fall line is in the stores, ready to be bought, worn, and enjoyed. Goodbye, then. Okay. Right. Um, so, journal. Um, called the historian. Um, when I confronted Heather, when I confronted her, Heather admitted writing Minette that letter, but she said she did it out of anger and doesn't know anything about the other letters. The big question now is, what, if anything, do I tell Minette? I called the historian who has been trying to talk to Minette about Noisette Tornade. Um... And discovered that Noisette was rumored to have stolen some artwork during World War II. She also had a German boyfriend named Hans for von Swesterkrank. The historian asked me if the words red, left, green meant anything to me. Apparently that's what Noisette kept saying just before she passed away. And obviously it's important because she kept saying it just before she passed away. Uh, that's how it works in, in these kinds of things. Zoo, he's the expert on Paris 
catacombs refuses to tell me more about that strange double nut symbol I saw unless I get JJ to write Zoo my love Jing. As if that wasn't bad enough, then I have to take the metro to the Dunfer Rocheron station, enter the catacombs and leave it for him in the skull below the plaque marking the bones from the Magdalene Cemetery. This guy better be on the up and up, that's all I can say. Yeah. Get JJ to write that thing. Ask Dieter about this other guy. Um, try to find out the meaning of those words. Ask Jean-Michel if there's an uncropped version of the photo. Call Zoo. Done. Been there, done that. Keep an eye out for the machine. Well... We haven't found that yet. Uh, greed. Called a historian. Been there, done that. Confront Heather. That's finished. And then we did the parrot thing as well. Been there, done that. All right. So what? Um. Jean-Michel, that's the person at the cafe, or restaurant, or whatever it was. So do we go there first, and then go see JJ? Yeah, let's do that. So restaurant, cafe, whatever, and then JJ. It'll be dark in a few minutes. I'm going to head back to Jing Jing's. Okay, so JJ first. <laughs> Day six. JJ? Hi. Hey, Rumi, how's it going? I just talked to this huge fan of yours. He'd really, really like your autograph. I'm flattered, but unfortunately, he's out of luck. Nobody gets my autograph. I'm afraid that someone will use it to forge my name and steal my identity. This guy wouldn't do that. Stuff like that happens to people like me all the time. I'm just not going to take the chance. Want to play hangman? Um, I could. And then if I win, you could give me the... The, um... That'd be great. Maybe if I do win, she'll give me the... Autograph. I mean, who knows? A. E. Correct. S. N. Correct. Okay, so N. Could be pen, men. Um, M. Oopsie. D. Ah, <sighs> come on. P. R. Right you are. Okay, okay. T. Oh. I think we may have lost this one. 
What could be there? Uh, I mean, it could be G in front of the R. It could be like quite a few of these. G. Uh oh. Um. Let's see. Oh, correct. <laughs> I'm only missing two letters and I can't. Broken. B. <gasps> Um, let's see, what else could it be? It wasn't broken. Um, uh, Proven? No, there's no P. Um. Um. Hmm. I just don't see it. Um. Mm. Ah, the Rosen. It is, isn't it? F. Right you are. Z, you won. Play again? No, thanks. Anytime you want to play, just let me know. I'll be back in a bit. Ciao, Bella. So, can I really not persuade you to do the autograph thing? Forget something. I'll be back in a bit. Ciao, Bella. Nothing about it here either. Uh, somehow get JJ to write it. Um. Okay, well. What do we have in our inventory? I don't see how any of these things would do that trick. Well, we'll, um, we'll figure it out. Maybe. Hopefully. Um, newspaper? Anything new? Summer paying off for park vendors. Oh yeah, we gotta go to the park too. Picasso painting found in pa in a uh, basement. Hmm. Belgian chocolate production is on the rise. Okay. Vendors who ask the Department of Public Works for permission to sell their wares in Square du Vert Galant Park this summer have been well rewarded. Despite the eclectic and ever changing nature of the items they sell, Everything from stuffed animals to hard to get herbs, and despite frequent rainy weather, all anticipate closing up shop on September 15th when their permits expire with money in their pockets. I had no idea I'd do this well, said one of the vendors, a woman named Malika. Another vendor, Monique. 
echoes that sentiment, adding, The park is kind of off the beaten path. I mean, you have to go up and down the stairs to enter and leave it, which is a big deal for some people these days, so I was pleasantly surprised. People aren't as lazy as I thought. The only vendor who doesn't seem surprised is the one who calls himself Monsieur Marchand. It doesn't really matter where I set up shop. My stuff is good. My prices are negotiable. I do well no matter where I am. Quality is quality. Each summer, the Department of Public Works receives hundreds of permit requests from vendors who want to do business in public parks and squares. The physical impact his or her business will have on the park is a prime consideration in the permit pro uh, process. Okay. So go see the, uh, the guy at the restaurant cafe place thingy and then uh, Oh, it was Hotel de Ville, right? And then also go to the park. The park is kind of on the way there. So, let's go to the park first and see if anybody's selling a decoding machine. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? Hmm. None of these is a decoding machine. What's this? Is this Ichido book any good? That book is very good. If you are around dangerous people, then you must get this book. You pay only 23 euros. I don't think so. Actually, I don't have time to read right now. What else do you like? Mm, nothing. Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Okay. What does she Bonjour, have? mademoiselle. What you need, I am sure to have. Well... You don't, actually. I could use a French-English dictionary. How much? This is the best French-English dictionary you can buy in all of Paris. Not too big, simple to use, hundreds and hundreds of words. I practically give it to you for 30 euro. No. I don't think I want it after all. What else appeals to you? Nothing for now. Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. Let's see. What does he have? Bonjour. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. Um, that looks just like the picture that was in Noisette's code book. How much is this? I have been told that it is probably a decoder used by those who resisted the German occupation of World War II. Really? How much do you want for it? Nothing. It is not for sale. It is a piece of history. I have it only as an eye catcher. But you're a businessman. You must be willing to part with it for something. Uh, I will trade you one piece of history for another. You give me a battle of Mouton Fouette, 1968, and I give you the decoder. Deal. What's Mouton Fouette? Mouton Fouette, 1968, is a very rare beverage that is usually stored underground. Unfortunately, finding an intact bottle has become next to impossible. But if you want the decoder, the impossible is what you must do. So, get me a bottle of Mouton Fouette, 1968. I will accept nothing less. In the meantime, what else tickles the fancy? Uh, nothing. So, are we going to find the bottle in the catacombs as well? Probably, right? Because he said underground. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. So, we've got to find this bottle.
first, let's go see the uh, the person at the uh, here. Was it here, or was it the Hoyu Bak? Well. Aha, uh -huh, it was here. Mademoiselle Drew, what is it now? The picture of Manette that was in the June issue of Glam Glam, was it cropped, do you remember? I'm sure it was. Most photographs are these days. Why? Do you know anything about the stones that are in the background of that picture? They almost look like dials. I do not remember seeing any dials in the picture, but uh, as it happens, all the pictures which I use in my articles are stored right here in my digital assistant. I will help you, mademoiselle, but only if you help me first. You see, the owner of this cafe, he faces a crease. The person who makes desserts for him has stepped out for his customary two and a half hour break. Unfortunately, a bus full of American teenagers has pulled up and all are clamoring for parfait. So, I will tell the owner that you will make the parfait, and when you do, he will be indebted to me and will allow me to continue using this table as my office. And I will be indebted to you and will allow you to see the picture. You see how it works? Yeah, I get the picture. Okay. Looks like I've got chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream, strawberry ice cream, caramel ice cream, bananas, tapioca balls, berries, and whipped cream. The first one I have to make is an exwa. Okay. So, what? Vanilla ice cream? No. Is that vanilla ice cream? Strawberry ice cream, chocolate ice cream. Bananas, more chocolate ice cream, and whipped cream on top. So... What just happened? <laughs> Nancy! Put it in the... Does that look like... No, it doesn't. I guess it's whipped cream there and not... Yeah. Um... How do I... There we go. That looks more like the uh, picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then strawberry ice cream, chocolate ice cream, banana, and more chocolate ice cream, strawberry, chocolate, banana, chocolate. That looks right, right? C'est bien. Now they want l'enfer. L'enfer. Uh, chocolate cream, chocolate cream. Um, were they strawberries or cherries? Okay. So... Oh, there's this too though. Oh, it's the... Is it this? It totally is. Okay. And then cream. More of that. More cream. These. C'est bien. I did it right. Next up, a tropical. Uh, banana, 
and then whatever those are, was it like cereal or something? And then the berries. So I'm just gonna say cereal. Banana, cereal, berries, strawberry, chocolate. Banana. It's, it's something, I don't remember what it was. And, uh, yeah, strawberry. Chocolate. Right? I think so. Merci. I'm getting there. Now they want a l'enfer. Another l'enfer. Chocolate cream, chocolate cream, berries. Come on, Nancy. There we go. I'm getting there. Next is a corbeau. Uh, okay. Was this like mocha or whatever? Chocolate, mocha, banana, mocha, chocolate. Banana. This again, whatever this was, and chocolate. Oui, c'est ça. I'm getting there. One misty coming up. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, cereal, berries, bananas, cream, cereal. Cereal, berries. Bananas, cream, it is cream and not vanilla ice cream, right? Yeah, looks like. And then cereal. Parfait! I'm getting there. Here comes a fantasy. Berries and vanilla, um, cereal, strawberry. Strawberry cream. Berries. Vanilla. Cereal. Strawberry. Cream. Oui, c'est ça. A Lulu. Banana. And was that like mocha or whatever? So yeah, banana, mocha, banana, mocha, banana. Parfait! He liked it! There, all done! The owner, he tells me you did a good job. And so, as was our agreement, here is the picture you wish to see. Great, thank you. Okay, so this shows the discs. So, what else do you wish from me? I'd better get going. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Do I now have the picture in my inventory? I hope I do. So what, we need to figure out how to get JJ to give us the signature. Um, we need to get the decoder, but the like bottle he wants is to be found underground. So it kind of makes sense to assume that we'll find it in the catacombs when we go there to take the signature to where we need to take it. Let's go see Dieter. We had we needed to ask him about the uh, other person with the same surname as him.
you're still in there. Mr. Von Schwesterkrank? Are you in there? Who's there? Nancy Drew. I just wanted to ask you some questions. I'm very busy. You'll have to come back. But this is really important. Is there anything I can do to help you? Well, if you want, you could take some stock photos for me. Sure. The list of things I need pictures of is on my desk. You can use the camera I let you borrow. I'll get right on it. Okay. On your desk. Here it oh, is. No, the list is in French. Ah. <laughs> so this is what we'll need the dictionary for, isn't it? So I know that Aranye is a spider. Um and Koa is a cross. And I don't know what a tear is, or, I mean, is con a crane? Could be. And bougie, um, is it like a bird? Like the the same thing as a as a budgie or I don't know. And then I have uh, no idea what an agrafeuse is, but I know Aranya is a spider and Koa is a cross, so that's a start. We could always get the dictionary. We'll have to go paint a picture or color a picture. Or it wasn't it like 30 euros or something. So we'll get 15 for coloring a picture. I think we'll go do that in the next episode. And then we'll be able to translate the words that I don't already know, which is most of them. Uh, so yeah, ending the episode in the same location we began it, but uh, from here we'll go to the park, we'll color a picture and then buy the dictionary and uh, see what exactly it is that we need to take photos of and then see if we can find all of the things on the list. But for now... Thank you so much for watching and spending a little of your time with me here today. It was lovely to have you. Please remember to be kind to yourself. Have a lovely rest of your day. And I will see you again next time. Actually, I already know where the spider is, but uh, yeah, we'll get to it next time. I, I just remembered where I've seen a spider.